Okay, let's go back and revisit division. Here's a division problem in a 10 run machine. 276 divided by 12 is 23. 12 looks like one dot next to two dots. We found lots of one dots next to two dots in the picture of 276. In fact, we saw two at the tens level and three at the ones level, 23. All right, grand. But that's us humans loving 10-1 machines so much. What I want to do now is repeat this idea in all machines all at once, which is crazy. All right, here goes. So what I mean by that. So I'm gonna play the same game now, but we're gonna do it in a machine, but I'm gonna not tell you which machine we're in. It's the mood I'm in. I might be thinking of a 10-1 machine, I just won't tell you. Maybe it's a 2-1 machine or a 3-1 machine. You won't know, because I'm not telling you. It's the mood I'm in. But you will have a machine, which is grand, so here's the start of a machine. And, uh, well, what machine is it? Well, you do know that dots here are always worth one, because I've always set the game up that way. And the thing is, you don't know if 10 dots explode to become one, or two dots explode to become one. You don't know what number machine. 10 one, two one, who knows? Now, just to give a nod to algebra in high school curriculum, if there's a certain thing you don't know and you want to represent it with a letter, what's the favorite letter of the alphabet for an unknown? Well, it turns out to be X. Everyone seems to be obsessed with the letter X for an unknown, so I'll, I'll follow suit and call this an X1 machine. X dots explode to become one dot, one place to the left. You just don't know what X happens to be. Maybe it's 10, I'm not telling you. Maybe it's two, you don't know, because I'm not telling you. It's in my head, I'm just not telling you. Huh. All right, but you do know dots here are always worth one, but you now know X of these dots, X1s, makes one of these guys. So this must be worth X1s. And X of these, XX's, that's multiplication, XX's makes one of those. This must be worth XX's. Most people call that X squared. And X of these, XX squareds, makes the next one over, X cubed. And XX cubed makes one of those, X to the fourth, and so on. All right, just as a check, if I do reveal to you that X really is 10 in my head, then do we really have the correct thing for a 10 1 machine? 10 1? Well, let's see, you'll get the numbers 1. If X is 10, I get 10. 10 squared's 100. 10 cubed is 1,000, I get 1, 10, 100, 1,000. In fact, that is correct for a 10-1 machine. All right, just another check. Suppose I said to you, actually, no, instead, X really was 2 in my brain all along. Is this correct for a 2-1 machine? 1, 2, 2 squared, 4, 8, 16. Yes, this is, in fact, correct for a 2-1 machine. So in some sense, this does represent all machines all at once. There it is, it could be a 10-1 machine, in which case we've got the correct numbers there. Could be a two one machine, in which case we'll have the correct numbers there, and so on. Grand. Now, out of the blue. I know we've been doing grade school arithmetic all this time. I'm gonna take us straight to advanced high school algebra right now, because I want us on this very spot right now to do this thing. Two x squared plus seven x plus six divided by x plus two. Whoa. Now, there's fancy language for this in high school algebra. They call this polynomial division or something, but whoa, what am I really doing? I'm not gonna worry about the language. I've got something like this to be divided by something like that. And obviously this is happening in X1 machine because I've seen all these X's everywhere. So, here's the true thing about doing math. Step one, if you've got a challenging problem, have an emotional reaction. Actually, you know, math is emotional. You should actually have an emotional reaction. We're all human. That looks scary and horrible to me. So I'm gonna have a deep breath and just see if I can calm my nerves down. All right, now I'm a little bit calmer. Let's look at this. Two X squareds plus seven X plus six in a x1 machine. Two x squareds, I can actually draw that. Seven x's, I can do that. Aha, uh -huh. and six ones, bingo. That's what two x squared seven x plus six is. It's actually some number in this x1 machine. Good. All right then, what does x plus two look like? Well, in an x1 machine, it'll be one x and two ones. One dot next to two dots. So I must be doing another division problem in some sort of number machine, it's just that it's this machine now. Here's the picture of 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. I'm looking for groups of one dot next to two dots. Or do I see any? Why, yes. Let me get my pen. One dot next to two dots. One dot next to two dots. There's one at that level. In fact, there's another one at that level. Remember, there must be some explosions going on. All the dots are really sitting in the rightmost part of the loop, just like in a 10 one machine. Uh, any more one dots next to two dots? Why, yes. And here. And here three at that level. So how do I interpret that answer? I'm seeing two x plus twos at the x level and three at the ones level. The answer must be two x's plus three. Whoa. In fact, look what we've just done. Look at these two pictures. In fact, these pictures are identical. Whoa, double whoa, in fact. 
All right, so what's going on? Why is this picture for an X1 machine exactly the same as this picture for a 10 one machine? Well, think about this. Suppose I did reveal to you now that X really was 10 in my head all along. What have we just done? 1, 10, 10 squared, 100, 1,000. We're in a 10 one machine. And what is this number here? Well, it would be 2, 10 squared, 200, plus 7 times 10, 76, divided by 10 plus 2, that's 12, apparently equals 2 times 10, 20, plus 3. 276 divided by 12 is 23. Of course it is. It's what we did over here. Whoa. So actually, I've just done a high school algebra question, and all it really is is just a repeat of grade 5, but now in a more general machine. In fact, if it really was a 10-1 machine, it really is exactly the same as grade 5. Um, if this was a 2-1 machine, the numbers are now 1, 2, 4, 8. What have I got here? I'll have 2 times 2 squared. 2 times 4, that's 8 plus uh, 7 times 2, that's 14, plus 6. All right, that's uh, 28, divided by 2 plus 2, that's 4. So 28 divided by 4 equals, apparently, 2 times 2, uh, 4 plus 3, 7. If this was a 2-1 machine, if x really was 2, I've got 28 divided by 4 is 7, which is correct. In fact, I love this approach, because what I'm really doing now is a whole infinitude of division problems all at once. Every possible value of x gives me a new division problem to which I have the answer. Brilliant. I'm not locked to my humanness anymore. I've gone beyond my human 10 oneness to any machine I like. That is power. In fact, that is advanced high school algebra. And look, it really is just a repeat of grade 5. So let me clean the board. Let's do another division problem. Let's make this one look really scary. And I bet we can do it. It's going to be just brilliant. So give me a moment to clean the board. All right, I'm back. I'm ready for an advanced algebra polynomial division problem. Here it is. It looks ghastly, but however, I think it's going to be just fine. It's really an x1 machine problem, just no one's telling me what x actually is. Fine, I'll deal with that. So let me draw this problem. So I want to do this top numerator, this great big number here, 1x to the fourth, 2x cubes, 4x squareds, 6x's, and 3 1's. That's what the top line is. And I'm looking for groups of the bottom line, x squared plus 3. All right, so what does x squared plus 3 look like? Let me just do it up here, actually. Um, it's going to be 1x squared, no x's, and 3 1's. So I'm really doing this division problem. So I've got a picture of the top line. There it is. And I'm looking for these, these groups in that picture. 1 dot, no dots, 3 dots. So I'm looking for 1 blank 3 anywhere in this picture. So I want to find groups of them. Can I do it? I bet the answer is yes. All right, let's see. Can I find some x squareds plus 3 in this picture? 1 dot, no dots, 3 dots. Why, yes. Here's 1 dot. Here's then skip over some no dots. And then let's do 3 dots, say, there. There's 1 at that level. Remember, all the dots really are sitting there. There must have been some explosion spinning them all the way to the left. So they're really at that level. Any other 1 blank 3s? Why, yes. Uh, I might split my loop this time. I hope it's OK. I'll do 1 blank 3, so 1 at that level. Another one at that level, one blank three. So far, so good. Grand. And what am I doing? I still got a dot here, and I've got three dots there. Look at that. One blank three, one at that level. There's my answer. One there, two there, one there. How do I read that? That's at the x squared level. That's at the two at the x level, and one. I do have my alignment right, don't I? Aha. Yep. One x squared, two x's, and one one. The answer must be x squared plus 2x plus 1. And here's the lovely thing, because this really is a grade 5 division problem. If I just happen to tell you x was actually 10 in my head all along, this was a 10 one machine. And the funny thing is, people seem to forget in algebra class that x can actually be a number. I can ask, what have I just done? Well, if x really was 10, I'd have what? 1, 2, 4, 6, 4. I'd have 12,463 divided by 103 apparently is 121. Turns out that's correct. So there again, another infinitude of problems, different values of x gives me lots of different long division problems, all answers all at once in one amazing hit just by drawing pictures. I own this idea. I can see polynomial division. Despite how scary that looks, I own it. I can see it. I can do it. Good stuff. All right, grand. So let's carry on.